right, welcome back to Chemisode, and this one is number five, and this one is all about metals and the metallic bonding model. Um, it's subtitled, Why Can Metals Bend? Because um, we're going to learn that in this video. So, let's have a look at metals. This area study is area study two, so we've finished area study one, which looks at the history and a bit of calculation, and now we're on to materials, which is looking at a bit more practical side of chemistry. And um, with materials, we look at how the property is directly related to the structure of the material. So um, we look at three materials. We look at three types of materials. The first being metallic, which this video is about, and the next one being ionic, and the last one covalent. So these are the three types of materials that we come in contact with. And we look at their structure, and we look at how that relates to the properties that they exhibit. So the first one's metallic, so let's get straight into looking at metals. What do we learn about metals? We learn about the properties of metals. We learn about um, how um, they behave. We learn about the structure of the metals, um, how they look at the atomic scale. We also then, um, the, probably the most important part of it, is looking at the explanation as to why we have these properties um, and how the properties link to the structure. And that's probably the most important area that you need to know in metals, is how the, the structure links to the properties. The last part is about modifying metals and is a bit more practical again. It's looking at um, how we can um, improve the metals for our uses of those things. So we look at how we make alloys and how we can treat metals and make them better for us. So let's go look straight and look at the properties of metals. What do we know about metals in general? So, here we have it. Metals, they're formed from only the metallic elements. Surprise, surprise. These metallic elements are generally found at the left-hand side of the periodic table. Okay, so all your metal elements, they come together and they form um, metals. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the properties of metals are generally the metals are pretty strong. So that means they're very pretty hard to break. Um, they're malleable. Malleable means they can bend. So malleability is the ability for um, a compound or a material to bend. And metals do have that property. They can bend quite well. Being ductile um, means they can be drawn into wires. So um, it's very similar to the malleability where they can be um, drawn out into a long and thin wire. That means they are ductile. Lustrous. Lustrous means things are shiny. So um, it, metals, they definitely are lustrous. They um, are shiny. In general, um, metals have a relatively high melting point. This little tilde sign here, this wavy sign, means about. So they have a pretty high melting point. Some of them obviously don't. Um, you've got things like mercury, which is um, melting point is actually lower than um, room temperature. And you also have things like, I think gallium actually melts at just above room temperature at about 25 degrees, about maybe 27 degrees, don't know. But most of them have a generally high melting point. Metals have this ability too, that they conduct heat. If you put a metal in a fire, it will start to get hot on the other end. So they, heat travels well through it. And metals also conduct electricity. That's why you don't stick a knife in a toaster, because um, the metal will conduct the electricity and you'll get electrocuted and um, be seriously injured. So please do not do that. But these are the properties of metals. We also have some metals and magnetic. I put that in brackets there because we don't really deal with that at this level. Um, yes, some metals are magnetic, but we don't really talk about why that is. But these are the properties that we can explain all these things here. So that's the properties. Um, you need to know the properties. The next slide is all about the structure of metals and how they actually look. So let's have a look at the structure of metals. Metals. Um, they lose electrons to become stable. All right. So when they, well, metals, they always have less than four electrons. They're always on the left-hand side of the periodic table, usually in groups one, two, three, and four. So when they become stable, they want to lose these electrons, all right, and become positively charged cations. What happens when you get a metallic bond happening or a metallic bonding model is that these electrons that are being lost, they become delocalized. And what we end up having is this kind of sea of delocalized electrons where you have these positive cations where we have the inner part, inner electrons and the 
um, nucleus here and around the outside all through this lattice of positive cations you have these um, negatively charged delocalized electrons. Now this is just one little sheet of atoms. Remember this should be in 3D so if you have a block of these what you're going to have is a nice lattice, a 3D lattice of um, cations and then you'll have these delocalized electrons kind of swimming around in between them. So that's the bonding model of um, metals where each um, atom, metal atom, has lost either one, two or three electrons and those electrons are delocalized kind of swimming around in this um, C, as you might call it. So we have the ordered lattice of metal cations and a C of delocalized electrons. Next up we're going to try and use this um, diagram here to explain the properties of metals which we explained earlier. So let's get stuck straight into that. Okay, so the first property that we're going to explain is why metals are strong and have relatively high melting points. Okay, so the reason we have a strong, um, strong substance is that because the particles that are, make up that substance, they're tightly held together. There's a strong force holding these things together. And in a metallic bond, what that force actually is, is an electrostatic force between these um, positive cations and the negative electrons. We have a force between these two guys which is holding this um, structure together. And the electrostatic force is a strong force. Okay, It holds it very strongly together because um, the electrostatic part of it just means it's between um, two charges. It's between a positive charge and a negative charge. That's what electrostatic means. So the reason we have a strong um, metal and the reason we have high melting points, in general high melting points, is we have this force, the electrostatic force between the cation and the electrons is very strong. That's why metals are relatively strong um, and they're quite hard to break. The next thing we're going to look at is um, why they're lustrous. Why are they shiny? And this is I don't love this um, explanation, but this is what's explained in the book, the textbook, and it says that the delocalized electrons have the ability to reflect light. I'm not going to go into any more detail. This is the only thing you really need to know about why metals are shiny, because these delocalized electrons, they reflect the light that shines onto them. That's all you need to know. This is probably probably the, one of the most important um, properties to explain the ability of the, um, the lattice here to conduct heat and to conduct electricity. We need to explain using this model here, using this diagram, why uh, metals can conduct electricity. The reason they can conduct electricity is because the delocalized electrons here, they're charged and they're, they are actually free to move and to carry um, the charge along and also to carry heat. Now, um, electricity by itself, all right, electricity is defined as the flow is sorry, the defined as the flow of electrons. If you have an electron flow, you have electricity. Metals have the ability for these electrons to move through the um, system here, and therefore we can conduct electricity because these charged particles, being the electrons, are free to move. Okay, so you now need to really be able to explain this property here really well because, um, well, it's going to come up many times. It's probably going to come up in your exam as well. Why can metals conduct electricity? Because the delocalized electrons, they're charged and they are free to move. So they can carry charge, which is electricity. Electricity is charge. They can carry the charge through the metallic lattice here. Okay. The cations don't move, but the electrons, they do move, and they have the ability to carry with them the electricity as they flow through our lattice. That's why metals can conduct heat, and that's why metals can conduct electricity as well, because the electrons are charged and are free to move. Moving on. 
Well, there we have it. They're free to move around. I've got I do animation here. Moving on. Why are metals ductile and why are metals malleable? Remember, this means that they can bend and they can be drawn into wires. All right. The reason that these guys um, uh, have the ability to, well, metals have the ability to move around is because these cations here, they can actually move within the lattice and still be held together by the delocalized electrons. The electrons have the ability to move with them and still hold their place. Have a look at this little animation that I know I did put in here. So these cations can move and they take with them the electrons as well. So if you have a force pushing down, these cations move, but they're still held by the delocalized electrons. So that's why these metals can be bent and that's why they can be drawn into wires. You can imagine these being all pushed aside um, and be just one thin layer of metal ions and you'll have um, a wire. So the cations can move within the lattice, but they're still held together by the delocalized electrons. That's the reason we have this malleability and this ductility, if that's a word. Um, they are ductile because cations can move just like we have here. The cations moving and still held in place by these delocalized electrons around there. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Um, you've explained now all the properties of metals um, and we can move on. Um, you need to know those properties and you need to know how this structure here links with those properties. That's what you need to be able to do. Oh, sorry, last one, magnetic. Who knows, okay? This bonding model does not tell you why some metals are magnetic, okay? It's actually to do with the nuclei and the spin of the um, atom, so the, the protons and neutrons in the nuclei. But this bonding model has a limitation. It cannot explain why some metals are magnet magnetic. Now we're going to look at modifying metals. So let's have a look at modifying metals.